Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Kalen and I'm from Modern Day Sniper and today we're going to be talking to you guys about flying with rifles. The last class that we taught down in uh, Virginia at Pig River, a lot of our students uh, decided that they wanted to come down to Florida and train with us there, but most of them were all within driving distance. And uh, for those students that hadn't traveled with rifles yet, that gave them and some anxiety because they don't want to, you know, um, do something wrong or get in trouble. And a lot of people look at it as uh, flying with a rifle is a hassle. And it's not really. As, a, as teachers in the space, we're traveling constantly with rifles to and from. It's not a big deal. Um, even airline to airline, the regulations are pretty straightforward across the board. So we just wanted to give you guys uh, a little introduction here about what to expect when you fly with a gun. So the first thing that we want to talk about right off the bat is accept the process. And what I mean by accepting the process, I mean go to the airport knowing that as soon as you walk through those doors, you are part of that system whether you like it or not. And once you kind of go into that mindset or go into that situation with that mindset, things tend to be a lot easier. You're going to end up running into people that are ignorant, uh, especially with the TSA they're only going to do exactly what they've been told and they will, generally speaking, not bend from that whatsoever. So that leads me into the next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about and that is research your airline regulations. Go over to your airline's website, check out their regulations on traveling with firearms and just see what they say. Make sure that you're completely prepared to meet their regulations and those regulations are gonna cover things like what type of case is approved for your rifle, um, what kind of locks that they require, um, and how much ammunition that it is that you can take with you on board the aircraft, um, and where that ammunition has to be, and we're gonna cover all that stuff here in a second. So um, pretty much I've traveled with every airline across the board, and I have never seen anything major discrepancy-wise between one airline doing it this way and another doing it another. It's all pretty much standard across the board. So um, we'll talk about that in the next step here when we start talking about pre-trip stuff. What are you going to do to get ready for your trip? And I'm actually getting ready to pack up all my gear and head to Texas and do a week of training with some, uh, with some reconnaissance Marines. And so I'm going to take you through my process of how I pack my gear and get it ready to go for airline travel. So pre-trip, I'm looking to make sure that all of my gear that has gone through, there is no live ammunition whatsoever, not even a case. Um, you can't even take a magazine, an empty magazine on board with you. So if you're one of those types of people that likes to take carry-ons as like your main, um, like all of your articles of clothing and stuff like that, make sure that you go through all of your stuff that when the bag goes through the screening at the security checkpoint, you're not that person because I have been that person and it's kind of frustrating because they kind of treat you like a criminal, even though we all know that uh, an empty pistol magazine is not a big deal, right? It's an inanimate object, even a, even a cartridge, right? A, a, live, a live cartridge. Um, those are all no-goes and those are things that like you forget to take out of your range bag at the end of the day Maybe you're rushing to, to meet a flight or something, you throw all your stuff in there and bam, you get, you get tagged with that. So if that does happen in security, the, the best thing to do is just follow the process. You're not gonna get arrested, you're not gonna get thrown in jail. Um, the main thing that's gonna happen is they'll usually call the port police over, make sure that it's, they don't know what it is, right? They don't even understand what a pistol magazine is. Uh, most of the people that work those security counters have no idea what this stuff is. So they're going to call a law enforcement officer over to inspect to make sure that it's not, you know, some sort of explosive device. And so, yeah, the cops are going to come over and it's going to be kind of an ordeal. And TSA is going to make it seem like they're saving the world right now. So you're going to have an opportunity to either mail it back to your home of record or you're going to have an opportunity to just get rid of it. And, and surrender it. So it just depends on you know, what it is that you're willing to surrender if you forgot to pull that stuff out of your bag. So just avoid that completely, go through your bag, make that a real top priority before you get on board an airplane. So when it comes to the bags that are gonna get checked into the airplane and they're gonna leave your possession, that's where, um, all of, that's where my rifle goes, that's where some of my shooting gear goes, and I try to reserve 
my expensive optics for uh, being carried on the airplane by me so that I'm always in control of them. So some people are real stickler about that. As long as if I have a case that is lockable, like a Pelican case, I'll, I will ship that stuff or put it on, on board the airplane as check baggage. I don't really have a problem with it. So when we go through the rifle, obviously your rifle needs to be unloaded. Uh, there's really nothing that you don't have to or you can't have in the rifle case. You can, I usually will carry my rifle in the case as well as a pistol uh, as a sidearm. That's not a big deal. Just make sure that you know that they're obviously unloaded, as we all should. So from there, your ammunition. Your ammunition needs to be in a separate container, and usually airline regulations state no more than 11 pounds. And ammunition cannot be shipped in, in like loose, uh, loose bags. So for those of you guys that are hand loaders and things like that, putting them into an ammunition wallet, I wouldn't necessarily take that risk if, that, if you've never done it before. If you have and it works, great, but I'll tell you right now, I've had things work and then go to another airport at another time and not have it work. So I would just rather go right across the board and follow the airport regulations. The ammunition has to be in a manufacturer's original um, carton or, or uh, container or an approved container that's made specifically for transporting ammunition, which would be like a, 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 load, a loaded box, a loaded ammunition box that, you know, that reloaders use. So those are fine. I highly recommend putting foam, put a layering, layering of foam over the top of uh, your meat plats to make sure, because they're gonna get tossed around. And then I always duct tape that box shut to make sure that it doesn't come open in my bag. So again, 11 pounds of ammo. And in the pre-trip, we just need to make sure that we're, uh, that we're weighing this stuff. Make sure that you're weighing it and that you're not over because obviously you're gonna have to pull everything out and start moving things around to make weight. So just make sure that you weigh them at home and you can use just a regular uh, scale, uh, bathroom scale to do so. Just weigh yourself and then weigh yourself with the bag in your hand and then you do the math and figure it out. So. Um, the other thing too, guys, with, uh, with transferring uh, NFA items from uh, across state lines. So suppressors, because we're primarily gonna be transferring suppressors you know, from state to state, as long as that suppressor is going to a suppressor-friendly state, it's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about filing anything with the, with the ATF. However, short-barreled rifles, yes, you, you have to, by regulation, you have to file a specific form with the ATF to move that short-barreled rifle from state to state even if it's going to a, an, uh, an SBR friendly state. So um, that, that's really easy with suppressors, no big deal there. So moving into what actually happens when we get to airport check-in. Airport check-in, what I always like to do is make sure that my gun case is locked when I walk into the airport. The reason that I do that is to make sure that I'm being cognizant and aware of my surroundings and I know for a fact that the majority of the people that I'm gonna encounter, they're not used to traveling and seeing people with gun cases. And quite frankly, it can make people nervous depending on where you're at. Now, if you're flying in and out of San Francisco International Airport, yeah, you're probably gonna have some issues with people giving you weird looks. Um, but if you're flying in and out of places like Seattle um, where, or Denver, where you're gonna see a lot of sports, uh, well, sportsmen coming, hunters and things like that, not a big deal. But when you go into the airport check-in, you're gonna roll up to the ticket counter and you're just gonna say, hey, I have a firearm to declare. And the check-in counter is gonna say, great, pop open the case, here's this little form. And it's gonna be a form that is a carbon copy and you just sign that form stating that you have verified that the rifle is in fact unloaded. You're gonna throw that form, um, the hard copy, it's gonna have one's kind of like card stock and another is car carbon copy lighter paper. You're gonna take the card stock and you're gonna put it in the case. Then you're gonna lock the case up in front of the ticket counter agent and understand guys, they're not gonna check to make sure that your rifle's unloaded. It, it could be loaded and you could look at them and say, yeah man, it's good. And they're gonna be like, okay, sounds good. You're signing the declaration. The problem with that arises is later on, after you go through your ticket check-in progress and you're gonna get your bag tags and your boarding passes and all that stuff, there's gonna be either, you're gonna to have to be required to walk your rifle to a, a TSA baggage check area, 
or they're going to have an airline representative and a TSA representative escort you to this location where they're going to inspect your rifle case. So when it gets there, you're going to have to open it up and they're going to swab the case and they're going to do all their security checks, again, thinking that they're saving the world, but just understand that this is part of the process. When you do fly with a firearm because of this part of the process, I always recommend showing up another extra half an hour early. That really is that half an hour early is just a buffer for ignorance. And, and what I mean by that, it's just you're part of the process. Nobody cares about you making your flight. They're going to be on their own program. They're going to be on their own timeline. And so you're going to be a part of that process. So just go into it with an open mind and understand that that's what it is. So when you're done with the rifle getting inspected, you're going to um, you're going to lock that case back up and then it gets checked into the airplane and off it goes. So your flight lands, you're at your arrival destination and you go to baggage claim to pick up your bag. If you're flying into a larger international airport, that rifle case is going to go to oversized baggage. And when it goes to oversized baggage, when you get there, they're gonna ask you to provide an identification card to show that you are in fact the person that is receiving this rifle. And once you grab your rifle, you're off, you're going wherever you're going. So if you're flying into a regional airport or a smaller airport, they're usually not gonna ask you for ID and the rifle's gonna come down the conveyor, you're gonna pick it up and off you go to your destination, wherever you're going. So in summary guys, flying with a rifle is not a big deal. Just make sure that you follow these points that we discussed in this video and just, it's not a big deal. Just go travel, go to matches, go to training classes and know that it's not a big deal to travel with a gun. So hope that helped you guys out. Hope it made you feel a little bit easier and I hope you got some information out of this. Take it easy next time.